This week on the Media Corps Minute Podcast, I am joined by Luke Minger. Luke is the president and CEO of Minger Construction. Minger is a family-owned civil construction company. We, we dive into Luke's story. Uh, we learn a lot about family business, how to operate, how to grow, how to kind of maneuver with, with the economy and how things change. And uh, yeah, a lot of stuff to learn, a lot of exciting things ahead. This will be a good listen. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. Yeah, doing awesome. Glad to be here. Yeah, excited that uh, excited that you're here. We, uh, I think, I think I've been uh, planning on doing a podcast with you for a while. Yeah, we've and been uh, trying to pin down dates. Yep. For probably a year. Yep, <laughs> yep. Good, good solid year. You finally got me. <laughs> yeah. After we after we did uh, it did that project, and I was like, you know, the more I learned about the company, I was like, dude, I got to get this guy on and chatting about his business and everything. So yeah, I'm excited you're here. Yeah, awesome. I get to yep. check out the, you guys' new digs and yeah, liking it. Yep, it's <laughs> good. Yeah, I know. We've been uh, this this is the first episode on, well, in this office in this new room. So we're excited about that, and uh, I'm going to actually try to roll these out weekly. Okay. So we were doing it for a while, and then uh, we kind of just got off, and life happened, and business got busy, and it's like this just got pushed to the wayside, but we got, we're going to get back. We're going we're gonna to rock and roll. So, um, but Luke, for, uh, for listeners that, that don't know, uh, what, is, uh, what is Minger Construction? So Minger Construction is a uh, it's a family business. Uh, my mom and dad started it in 1984. Um, our primary focus is uh, sewer and water utility work, excavating, yep. um, tunneling is kind of a niche that we got into. But our big thing is, you know, if it's a challenging job that everybody's kind of running the opposite direction, we're gonna yeah. run to it yep. and try to come up with a solution. Um, that's kind of the way we've all been trained that's the way my dad was he was a huge out of the box out of the box thinker um yeah. and that's kind of how we our culture is is like hey let's not run from a problem let's go towards it and you know tackle it so that's were you, that, were you kind of always like that as a company or, or did it yeah, kind of so evolve I mean, into that years ago we did a lot of private development stuff pretty you know uh straightforward not nothing too complex but Dad always would like gravitate towards something that would be, you know, a challenge on the project, and yep. you know we could figure that out. And I think as we kind of grew over the years and got a little more, more support, yeah. his ideas and idea, you know, we're able to. He had some backup, so he's like, "All right, let's go for these." Or I think yep. before, you know, he was kind of a, you know, couple guys show, and you know, I, I think he probably was a little more reserved. He's like, well, you know, I, <laughs> there's a little more repercussion. I, this is all on my shoulders or, yeah, 100%. you know, he built a team around them. And I think more and more we gravitated towards more challenging projects, especially during the recession, um, you know, 07, 08. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing a lot of, you know, site development work, stuff like that. And that market completely tanked. Yeah. So we're like, well, we got to start. We got to switch it up. Here. Yeah. We got to think of stuff to do other yep. than um just do kind of what we normally do because you know people are dying out there as far you know going yeah. under uh downsizing huge and we actually grew during the recession which was kind of crazy but you mm -hmm. know it just that kind of that think outside the box attitude is what you know what really grew and we got some good young guys around us at the time that you know jumped on board and we're like hey let's let's go for this um I mean, at that time, you had to be flexible. And yeah, like, just roll with whatever's working and find out what works and make it happen. And yeah, and that that mindset, it's honestly, it's made it what we are today. I mean, if if everybody was kind of like, no, we don't, <clears throat> we don't know how to do that, you know that, and everybody'd be no. like, no, I want to stay to the, what I normally do. Mm -hmm. Who knows if I'd be sitting here with you talking right now, right? You know, right. so I, you know, I look back at it and yeah, we did some crazy stuff. You know, I look back. I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> but you know it, it, it worked. So I mean, it uh, it's been it's been yeah. a fun ride. That's for sure. What was your dad's background when he like started this? Farmer. Okay. Yeah, he's a farm kid from uh, Northeast Iowa. Okay. And uh, he actually was on the fence of being a farmer and, and just, lived just on the doing that. lived on the family farm. And I think my mom was like, "No, I, <laughs> I don't think I can live down here." Nope. So you know, so that he took a job up in the cities working for a uh, heavy civil contractor. Um, started traveling kind of between Minnesota and Colorado. They had a division out there. Oh. So when I was a baby, actually, I lived in Colorado. Okay. And there again, they were going to ship my dad to the complete 
middle of nowhere in I think uh, southwestern Colorado, and he's like, mm. uh, I, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Yep. Raise a family out in the middle of the mountains. So mm-hmm. he ended up moving a family back to Minnesota. Worked for a couple contractors in the uh, um, Minnesota metro area. Yep. And lo and behold, his neighbor was a plumber, and he had this uh, tractor backhoe. That's and he's great. like, I'm looking for people to uh, uh, dig dig my house hookups. So he's like, all right. He's like, I'm <laughs> not quite sure what it, you know. I'd, and he actually, I think he, the story is he got let go at the place or they they were downsizing yeah, yeah. where he was working at. And he's like, all right, here's my opportunity. So he went knocked on his neighbor's door. He's like, I want to buy that tractor backhoe Dang. from you. And he had a uh, pickup truck tractor back out and the funny story is a 10-speed bicycle so what he would do is he would throw his 10-speed bicycle in the bucket of the tractor back out, drive to the uh next house that he had to do a hookup mm-hmm. while his tools are back in his pickup yep. so instead of you know efficiency uh, <laughs> pat Minger That's always great. always uh pushed efficiency so he's like i i gotta save time so instead of me walking all the way across no his neighborhood way. he'd get on his 10-speed bicycle and bike to his Dang. pickup truck throw it in the back and then right off to the next house. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's that's kind of how he got how he got into the industry, and then yeah. he, uh, you know, kind of started growing Minger Construction. Um, mm-hmm. Got you know he had a business partner that he came in, and they kind of grew kind of rapidly right off the start, and then they kind of reined things back a little bit. And no. um, they, that's the, the ebbs and flows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like yeah. you know it. it learning curves you know you start yeah. out and you got you know they were young at the time i look back and i'm like holy cow you know dad was only in his early 30s when he fired it up and no. you know actually shoot he was he was less than 30 so yeah, yeah you know cool. it's crazy to think you know a lot of ambitious and you know um <laughs> a lot of courage to yeah. to do what he did and yeah but yeah you know there's 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 roller coaster for sure you know yeah. to especially to get to where we are today what was what was that like for you then, kind of growing up? Like, were you were you working, you know, for the company, or were you? you know, yeah, so I always take along with look? dad. You know, yeah. people ask how long you've been in the industry, and I always like <laughs> point to like the size of my knee. You know, since I've been this tall, you know, because I would, I would dad would throw me in the truck with him, and we'd, you know, drive around the job sites, and I always thought it was cool. Yeah, you know, every, you know, little boy loves, loves diggers. Yep. you know, yep. so. I, you know, I'd go on parts runs with them. Um, hey, these, this crew needs this. Hop in truck. Let's go. Nice. He had a little. He loved to fly, so he had a little airplane. And that's sweet. Yeah, so he'd throw me and my brother in, and we would go for an airplane ride and go check on jobs in Wisconsin or Iowa Dang. and whatnot. So it, it, it ever since yeah. And then he, you know, it, as we grew older, he's like, all right. You're going to help, yep. you know, get home from school. It's yeah. like go Night to the work. yard and organize or, you know, it, it, you know, it's crazy that it, what I, the, the stuff that he'd have us do. I mean, mm. I remember jumping in a loader at eight years old and he's like, all right, it's on the weekend. No one else is around. I need yeah. to get this loader to the other side of town. I'll follow you in a pickup. And yeah. I look at that back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, an <laughs> eight year old driving a wheel loader down the highway. It's like probably not the <laughs> most safest yeah. thing to do, but yeah. hey, it was the eighties. Back then they didn't care. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, just <clears throat> growing up around it and just, mm-hmm. you know, and understanding it. And, you know, he he made me labor. And, yeah. You know, and you kind of learn from the bottom up. You know, that, that's – that's, and I appreciate that huge, yeah. you know. He was probably a firm believer in you got to you gotta work your way up and – Oh, for sure. Do everything inside of the company. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I went to college for construction management, and that's the one – thing I always tell a lot of people is, you know, I, I get done with college and, you know, I got this construction management degree. I'm, yeah. I, you know, I know everything. Yeah. You get, get home from some, you know, school and I'm going to work for dad and mom. And, uh, was that the plan? That was, that was a plan. You know, I kind of looked at different avenues, but I'd always go home during the summer, do my internships and, and mm-hmm. work uh, pretty much every, every summer since I graduated high school, I, you know, I'd work full time and, uh, got back and, you know, thinking like, oh, maybe I'll have this cushy office job. Yeah. No, he like literally put me in the bottom, the lowest position at Minger Construction. Yeah. I was a uh, bottom man on a pipe crew. And that was right out of uh, college? Right out of college. You know, Dang. I got this nice big yep. plaque on my, you know, I could hang on an <laughs> office that I don't have. But, yep. Yep. <laughs> but you know, and, and he threw me in the ditch and, and yep. you know, I bitched and moaned about it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, what the heck? You know, it's like, why? 
I got this yeah. college degree. Yeah. I've got other buddies that I've are going. I've been doing this. I went to college. Yeah, they're working what, for these big we, GCs. Yeah. They got, you know, they're, they, they're driving pickup trucks, you know, on here. <laughs> Where's my company truck? Right, right. And it's like, no, head right out to the ditch. But it, <laughs> honestly, looking back, it's the best thing he ever did for me because mm-hmm. I learned how to work from the bottom up, yep. you know. And it, it just it made me, I guess, um, respect uh, the people that work around you a lot more. Uh, well, I think even vice versa, you know, like you do that, you know, you earn the respect from all the guys it, in the company. It's it, exactly. Like, oh, you know, here's daddy's kid doing this. Oh, it's like, no, like right. you worked with us all through the, yeah. Yeah. You know, this kid didn't get handed a silver spoon and there's so. still always talk of that. You know, oh, yeah. you're always the, the boss's kid. Yeah. So you got a point to prove, you know, it's like, I, I got to make sure, I, you know, yep. and I think that helped me along too, is, you know, I wanted to prove people wrong that, you know, it's Absolutely. just not going to. It was just not handed to me, I, I, you know, try to work for this. So, yeah. but yeah, that's kind of, that's, he threw me right to the, to the wolves. And where, where did you go to college by the way? Uh, Colorado State. Okay. Yeah. She went out west. Yeah. And it was just kind of a, a whim. I actually started, I was going to technical school or yeah, technical school in Bloomington, Normandale and uh, mm-hmm. doing that full time my first semester, but I was working full time for dad. Yep. yep. And I was putting in 40 plus hours and doing, I think, 13 credits. And I'm like, I'm looking at this vision, like, this is going to be my whole college career is I'm going to be working full time yeah. and going to school full time. I'm like, I need to get out of here. So I right. kind of threw a dart on the wall a little bit. And I'm like, oh, Colorado State, Fort Collins, Colorado, that looks mm-hmm. cool. It's so, a beautiful area. A beautiful yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, that definitely was appealing. Yep. Um, so yeah, went out there and went to school there for four years. I um, originally wanted to go towards civil engineering, but I'm too dumb at math. So I quickly, uh, quickly went over to uh, construction management. So it, uh, no, I, yeah. I met a lot of awesome people out there. Um, mm-hmm. I'm still talk with a lot of people that I you know, went to school with. And, right. Yeah. It, what do you, what do you think, um, like main things that, that really helped, you know, like kind of getting that degree, learning that stuff, you know, how, how have you been able to kind of apply it now? I think what I tell people with college, the big thing, like especially, so we're in civil construction. Right. A lot of these construction management degree is it's a lot of vertical building. Oh, okay. So it's, for me, it was a little bit hard to like, I, I didn't really care about vertical building. It's not always a quake. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I've always been rolling around in the dirt. I like dirt. Yep. And so it was kind of hard for me to like, really like love the classes sometimes. But like one thing is that like, even my dad told me this. He's like, use college as a, it's a way to network and get answers. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing that I got out of college is how to get answers and how to talk to people and figure out how to use your resources. Mm-hmm. I think that's my biggest getaway that I got out of college. You know, um, yeah, you learn math and you learn, yeah. you know, contracts and all that type of stuff and construction management survey and all that. So, I mean, there's things you take out, but my biggest thing is just how to network, work with people as yep. a team and get answers. I think that's, that's my biggest opinion what college really and There's a lot of it. soft skills that you get from yeah going to college and you know, it, exactly. And there, there's no class for, you know, right. Team building. I mean, yeah. there is now, but you know, <laughs> in my time there wasn't, it's <laughs> like, yeah, here's a project. Here's your group of people. And yep. you know, you're kind of learning life lessons that you don't even really know you're learning until you look back after the fact, you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That worked out pretty well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and yeah, looking back now, you can really see, you know, what, how it's affected yeah, everything. And yeah, you know. it's, it, it, and you know, it college isn't for everybody. You know, you right. hear a lot of that now. It's like, and, and I agree, you know, if you're really undecided, you know, you can work in the trades and make a really good living. I mean, that's what mm-hmm. a lot of our ancestors and relatives did. You know, yep. you know, college wasn't a big push thing until, you know. It's it's becoming, it, it's, it's really becoming flipped. I mean, like there's the whole, there's a stigma for a while, you know, that you can't like don't go to the trades, like get a, you know, get a degree, oh. go find this professional job and do this and that. And then it's like. Now it's getting flipped to where, like, yeah, you can do that, but oh, for sure, we you can you can come on board right here. We can train you. We can pay you. You don't have to have all this debt and this time spent doing that. You know, so by the time your peers are getting out of college, you have more money in your pocket, trained, and you have a full time job now and a career that you can it, exactly like easily make six fi- six figures in. It, you know, yep, without, and, and move up from there without a doubt. I mean, there's yep. people in our industry that you know 
there's a lot of people that started as a you know sweeping the shop floor and yeah. now they're the ceo of a company you know yeah. it it doesn't it doesn't always need a college degree on that and that's like you were saying i mean when i was a kid you know, in the, you know, the kind of the nineties and early two thousands stigma was, is like, if you don't go to college, you're kind of a failure. Yeah. You know, nobody's yeah. like, nobody wants to be a ditch digger. And yeah. it's like, everybody kind of had that mentality and, and it doesn't, that's not always the case. You know, yeah. you can be very successful in life if you put your mind to it and, you know, figure you know. I didn't really know what I was going to do. So I did like a, a semester of personal training at, at the local college and I stopped immediately. I'm like, I'm not going to do this for, <laughs> forever. Yeah. Yeah. But it was one of those things like when you don't know, you don't know, but if your parents are pushing you to college, it's like, what make a decision. Like you got to go, you know, you right. do something. It, exactly. It's like, it's you like, don't want to be that guy living on mom, mom and dad's couch mm -hmm. and, you know, and doing the, you know, blue collar job yep. and, and that's just that everybody is like, oh, that guy did, did, is doing what? You know, and it's mm -hmm. like, you look back and like, it's just fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, that person's making a heck of a lot of money and they're Absolutely. doing just fine in life. Yeah. Well, now the more the more people I talk to that, that own companies as well as they're like, you know, what I'm looking at at resume, I'm looking at experience now versus just a degree. You yeah. Know, like <laughs> this guy has, you know, experience and all these these skills that he's learned over the years doing this thing that's more valuable to me now than somebody that just walked out with a degree that you know oh without a doubt they're very green so like yeah now, now even that's coming into play with yeah things, and know. he even talked to like we will do uh, internships at uh, Minger Construction and mm -hmm. you'll get guys and they'll come in and they're like yeah I learned more this summer than <laughs> you know I, I learned it all uh, you know the last two semesters or yeah. last semester in college and it's like yeah that's because it's it's real world stuff you know and, and you got to think on the fly and there, there's no textbook for it you, know? you learn quick oh yeah you have yeah. to if you're doing it swim. day in and day out you're learning quick I, exactly it's, yeah exactly yeah. no I like that yeah um so diving back into you know the the company you know you're out of college you're Starting from the bottom, you know, what does that progression look like to, you know, take it on more and more? You know, when does uh, when does even like did you and your dad talk about ownership at you know different points or what does that look like? Not really. I mean, I think that was always kind of a, a long term vision. You know, I kind of both on the same page, right? Especially yeah. since I got him more into it, I you know was enjoying it. This is what I want to do in life. You know, that kind of became a goal. Yeah. You know. Um, we, we were a great team, worked together. Um, so it, you know, I, I, like I said, I started from the bottom as a labor, then I kind of transitioned to an operator, yep. you know, and then, then he kind of gave me, threw me to the wolves again. It's like, Hey, I, you know, we need another crew. I want you to run the crew mm. in the field. So, you know, I did that for, I think it was a couple summers and then how he kind of progressed in the office and project management is during the winters, you know, we'd be slow. So he's like, well, I need to help, need help in jobs. So, Here's here's a plan set, do a takeoff, figure out, you know, throw me all the numbers of what you think this is all is, you know, then he would final the bid. Eventually, you know, a trans taught me how to bid. Mm -hmm. Here's our uh, Excel spreadsheet, you know, I'll figure out how to how to bid the job and you know, he'd look over it and like, all right, let's run with it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, that definitely progressed to, you know, running jobs and you know, from winter time, and then I, I, you know, a couple summers in, it was like, all right. He's like, I, I need help managing oh, yeah. these jobs. You know, we're kind of growing a little bit, a little bit here, and you know, I, I can't manage everything on my own. So yep. that kind of helped me get the office side of it. So there again, I kind of started from the bottom, bottom down in the office. Bottom, yeah, and, and that's the way there. you kind of have to start. You yeah, know, and that way you learn and you know figure out how to deal with people and you know. Um, it comes back to that work experience too, you know. If you if you do everything, you understand how it works. Right. You have expectations for certain people, like it, you know now. Exactly, especially if you know, with us doing a lot of pipe work, you know, you've been down in that ditch. You know how the pipe goes together, what parts you need, yep. and that can transition to the office. And mm -hmm. you know, when you're bidding a job and you're like, you know, it's not always going to spell out exactly what you need or how it. It, oh yeah you got to build it in your head when you're bidding a project so i you know do it having that experience definitely helped you know you, you have a clue yep. whereas you know uh, if you just go straight in the office and you've never seen it or been around it it mm -hmm. it makes it hard for you to grasp the the reality of it so yeah that, that, that was huge yeah but, and just that idea of like you know like you you don't want to have 
people doing stuff that you wouldn't, you know, do yourself or have done. You know, it's like hundred mentality too. Yeah, because yeah, it's like <laughs> you don't get it. You know, it's like I've right. done it, man. And if I don't want to put myself in that, that's one thing. When yeah. you look at work, it's like if I don't want to do it or put myself in that position, I have a really hard time putting a number on that, mm-hmm. you know, or putting a bid on that. Because if if I have a tough time doing that, not wanting to do it myself, why am I going to ask? my crew to do something that mm-hmm. I don't even want to do. No. So, and it's something where, you know, if I'm even on the fence, we'll have a conversation with the foreman or, you know, uh, some of the people on our staff would be like, Hey, what do you think of this? You know? And if they're telling me, heck no, right. You know, we'll pull the pin. You know, it's like, you, you gotta have people that anybody can write a number down mm-hmm. and go get work, but All right. you got to build it. Yep. <laughs> it's the, that's the whole, the, that's the hardest part is, you know, that challenge, you know, once you got the project is actually going to figure it, it out. out. Yeah, 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 exactly. Get it done. Yeah. That's always, uh, astonished me just like in your guys' industry, you know, you mean, you get large scale, long-term projects, it's like you have no idea like what you're really getting into you know and you've you've done stuff in the past and you obviously have the experience but it's got to be always things that you don't change and it's like how can you plan for all of the you know oh <laughs> i didn't know that was gonna happen and if fortunately we see it more and more as you know I, Weather's huge, and that's been from the beginning of time with construction. You know, you can't. Mother Nature's gonna win every day. Yep. So you you gotta adapt to that. Um, and there's ways around it. You know, sometimes you don't push it. Sometimes you do push it. Um, but the big, you know, a lot of things we struggle with are sometimes out of our hands or um, utility conflicts. You know, that can mm-hmm. put a job to a screeching halt. You know, we're digging away, and next thing you know, you get a high profile fiber that's right in conflict and then and mm. boom you're shut down then you're like oh. eh, plan b plan c you know where, where are we going next you got you know we've got and then you're moving crews and equipment and yeah that takes and that's time and, money and, and it's a lot of juggling and you know and then unfortunately we kind of see more and more of it just because you know especially when you get in the type of work we do is we do a lot of you know uh, reconstruction in urban environments and you know, we're getting in uh, infrastructure that's 100 years old. And, you know, how well do they document everything? Exactly. They did it 100 and, years ago. Yeah. yeah. And there's some owners that are, it blows you away how well they did. I mean, you're looking at yeah, documents that are 100 years old and you're like, and they're spot on. <laughs> then you get somebody that only put something in five years ago and they don't even have anything on it. So it's, yeah. you know, it's. We're going in blind. Right. Going <laughs> completely blind. And, and it gets frustrating. It gets frustrating for the crews because, you know, they, they want to work and, you know, mm-hmm. you get shut down and, you know, and we got to go on to the next thing. So, you know, that, that that's a real big industry challenge that we have is just, you know, kind of unknown conditions and mm-hmm. you got to hit the brakes. No. Yeah. But it, yeah, like I said, you got to have a plan B or C. It's always no. kind of try to have something up your sleeve and, you know, something to move on to. And it, uh, unfortunately, it's not the most efficient way, but as long as you can keep working yeah. and money flowing in the door, it, to me, that that's, that's key. So, mm-hmm. so that, you know, because you stop work and tell everybody to go home. You know, those people got to feed their families too. Yep. So, yep. you know, I've got to try to f- figure something out for them. Well, yeah, and you feel the pressure of that, you know, on, on your back when you're, yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Day and, yeah, yeah yep. you know, because it's, you know, I, we're a big family. You know, yeah. we've, uh, it's, uh, I feel the pressure that I got to make sure that these people are working mm-hmm. so they can provide for their families. You know, that's, that's, I, I really take that serious because, yep. you know, that's, uh, I get it. You know, if somebody's not doing their job and then they can't work, you know, well, it's feast or famine. They're going to go on to somewhere somewhere else. They got Absolutely. they got to eat, you yeah. know. And then if you got key employees, you don't you don't want to lose it. You don't want to lose it, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that, that's 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 my big big one of my big priorities mm-hmm. is make sure keep keep the wheels going, keep people rolling, and always have an open mind. So, yeah. yeah, I like that. Um, you know, we've we've had uh, we've had a lot of. I would say multi-generational, like family-owned businesses, you know, over the years and that have been on the podcast even. And, every, you know, everyone does it differently, you know, transition-wise from, you know, owning and, you know, equity and how does this all work, you know, and I know you have a different experience with that, you know. How did it look for you guys when, you know, you transitioned into, you know, running the company? So a transition, um, I think mom and dad saw that, 
he's going to be able to figure this out, yep. you know, and they're like, well, let's start transitioning. And I, I look back at the now, thankfully we started transitioning when we were a little bit smaller, Yeah, made, made it a little bit more affordable for me at yep. that time. Yeah. But, yeah. um, it, you know, we started that transition, I think it was in 15, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it almost nine years ago now. And just like portions, portions, you know, I, I would buy into it and, yeah. you know, and then I, at that time I became 75% owner of yep. the company. Um, dad was 25% still, you know, was he doing much hands on? Yeah. Day day and, yeah. Yep. Dad, dad was pretty much hands on <clears throat> till, till he passed away. I mean, he mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, um, involved. He, he was the type of guy that wasn't going to retire. Right. He enjoyed it way too much. Um, Most guys, when they start it, they're just attached. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was something where he wasn't putting submittals and RFIs together. Yeah. You know, he was out there problem solving. And that's mm-hmm. what he loved. I mean, he'd be driving around the job sites, just checking in, just seeing if people need help. Yeah. You Boost know? the morale, checking right. with the team. Right. And, you know, yeah. doing, you know, just problem solving. Mm-hmm. If he needed to jump in a, the low boy yep. to go deliver something, he'd you know, sometimes you'd be like, yeah, I don't know if you need to be in that, but <laughs> you, 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 all right, you yeah. get, in, get in, run, yep. run. Yep. Yeah. So, it, you know, he was the type of guy that, you know, it, as, as, you know, towards the um, last, you know, two years ago, you know, he was, I was pretty much day to day, you know, scheduling, making sure crews are going. And, you know, he yeah. was just kind of there for that, that support and making sure, you know, you know. But but at the time, like he had pretty much said, like you're yeah you're running the show. Yeah, right now. it's kind of you know, it, he would consult with me on stuff. He's like, hey, this is yeah. what I'm thinking, and we'd bounce ideas, and sometimes we wouldn't agree cool. on things. Yep. But you know, we'd agree to disagree, and we'd we'd move on. You know, and and <clears throat> a lot of times I'd be like, <laughs> we'd both be like this, but it'd be like two hours later, I'd be like, yeah, you know what, you're right. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you got a good point. After, you, you know, you may be firm, like, yeah. oh, no, stubborn, no, that's not the way, I want to do it my way. Then all of a sudden you're like, uh, no, it's a, it's a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. run with that. So, and that's why we worked really well that way. You know, it, you know, we'd have ideas and he'd do the same to me. You know, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, it, that is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's run with that. So, you know, we, I feel like we both had open minds and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah as far as the transition goes, you know, it, I just slowly took more and more over the yep. operations and the day to day. And um, was there ever like, like, this is like a day where you're kind of like technically like, no, you know, just no. kind of just it was, load into that. Yeah. yeah. And that's just it was <clears throat> very informal. Yeah. No, you know, it's yeah, just kind of like, he just kind of let me fly. And then, you know, it's like, I, like I think he was kind of sitting there in the background. If, you know, if Luke was starting to sink bad, he's, he's going to come right in and, yeah, yeah. you know, and fortunately I didn't sink. So, yep. <laughs> you know, it's, yep. uh, but having his support there and being able to bounce ideas, you know, that, I think that was my biggest, that's the reason I succeeded in being mm-hmm. able to move forward is, you know, you, you had that resource there and it's like, well, what do you think type of a deal? So, right. yeah, I think that, you know, that was huge. So how, how'd sport come with just like <clears throat> leadership in the company and the, you know, the whole team? I mean, when you're, so as we've grown, um, we've kind of redeveloped our, our leadership program, yeah. you know, um, back in the day, you know, we had one general soup. Now we have five, you know, and we kind of split it up and, you know, we tear it down and we have foremen and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So it, my big thing is you can't do it all. Right. So try to develop people to help take that weight off your shoulders. And I, my word of advice to our, like our leaders within our company is train your replacement. Mm-hmm. And some people look at me like, yep. what are you talking about? Yep. It's like, well, if you want that day off, um, you want to go to the cabin with your family. You got someone that can do you that. You can somebody to take that with you, and you're not sitting there at the cabin with your family. You're supposed to be enjoying family time, and you're answering phone calls all day long, and you're technically not even on vacation. You're still at mm-hmm. work. So that's that's what I mean when I say that to people. It's not like I you don't want that guy to take your job, but it makes your life a lot easier that you got a lead person that right. that can support you when you're when you're gone and. Well, and, and technically, you know, that person can't keep progressing if they're not finding the person to replace what they're doing it, it, to to be doing more or something else. Exactly, and in that, in you know, 
a good leader will let that person step up if another mm-hmm. position opens within the company you know or if unfortunately if you know if we don't have that position and there's another company that does you know let that person grow mm-hmm. you know but our big thing is try to train within yep. and promote those people you know that that's always a primary goal you know for hiring somebody the first thing we do is kind of like you know see if we can get somebody within the company because you know they, they understand our culture they understand mm-hmm. our values um so you know that that's that's always your number one choice and sometimes it's not an option but yeah you know that, that's the big thing is just like don't try to do everything on your own you mm-hmm. know lean on i mean if you got a good support staff which we're very fortunate we got great people you know yeah. it, it makes my life a heck of a lot easier you know it's like you can lean on these guys and yep. a lot of times they're a lot smarter than me on a lot of things you know well, yeah you're surrounding yourself with experts and uh, what they do right know? that's that's that support system i mean i've heard this and read this from you know always try to hire somebody that's smarter than you mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it, it's because it's going to make your life a lot easier you know and and they may know a lot more things about that certain aspect and and you might even know more about something else that they don't understand but as a whole it just makes it a a great team so that's that's what our our big thing is you know just try to Mm -hmm. you know build around and you know try to you know develop leaders is what we try to focus on and i heard you mention you know the the you know, kind of the mission core values that the, you know, the company has and stands for. I mean, do you guys live those out pretty, pretty heavily? And is that? Yeah. Yeah, we do. I I wish that's one thing I think we can improve on is Mm -hmm. like make it a little more, I guess, firm. Yeah. You know, we don't walk into our office and we got big core values across. We, you know, I don't know if that's the right answer or not, but you know, um, I think that's one thing I could improve on is to make that a little more clear. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think, you know, our, our biggest thing is, you know, safety, efficiency, family. You know, I, one big thing is everybody's a family member. I, I still like to know everybody's name and their company. We're up to 120 people, but mm-hmm. my main goal is I still want to remember everybody's name. If I can walk up to a job site, I want to know everybody's first name. Absolutely. And, and to me, I, family's huge. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of if you got a good family life, your work life is going to be better, mm-hmm. you know? And if you don't have a good work life, it can make a poor family life. So no. it, it's you carry it in both ways. It, exactly. And you want people to come to work because if people want to come to work, mm-hmm. it's going to make the job that much go by it faster, get yep. back to your family quicker. And it, time goes by faster, but you're going to be you're going to be a better individual. You're going to be a better worker just because if, if you're happy, mm-hmm. you know, it just look at anything. I mean, oh, if you dread and out, don't want to go wake up in the morning, then you should be really looking at what am I doing in life? Yeah. You know, and you're going to have days. There's, there's days where, you know, not every, every not every day is a uh, rosy, peachy, full of rainbows and unicorns. It's, yeah. you know, there's going to be tough days, but as long as there's more better days than right. than bad days you're, you're doing something right yep. and you know that's another thing my dad taught me is like if you can find a job that you enjoy going to and you don't think of it as a job that, then you're succeeding no matter how much money you're making mm-hmm. or whatever as long as you if you don't think your job is a job All right and you know you're, you're you're doing good in life and my that's my opinion yeah I, I mean i think i mean we've even here we try to build a culture that like people look forward to coming into work. You yeah, know, we want to want to have a team. We want to have an environment. We want to have you know that that culture that's like oh, I look forward to Mondays. You know, like to me, like Fridays, like I'm like, dang, I gotta like figure out what to do now. Right. You know, <laughs> let's get back to Monday because like I like being around these people. I like what I do. You know, it's like that's that's what I've created and I've tried to to have that here. You know, and it's the same thing because that's. Like if, if you're enjoying what you're doing, you're thriving at it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And, and you're going to be, like you said, you're thriving. You're going to be a better individual and you're yep. going to succeed. Yep. Uh, so, uh, you know, transitioning a bit to, uh, you know, just the, the industry in itself, you know, how do you, how do you think uh, economy has been, been just hitting the, the, the construction industry as, as a whole and even like the civil side? It's... <laughs> Usually I try to have a pretty good gauge on it. In these yeah. last three years, I it shocks me every year. Yeah. It's like you just think it's uh, you kind of 
being Mr. Doomsday guy, like, yeah. oh, it's going to, you know, <laughs> it, things are going to slow down. And especially living through the, or being, you know, through the big recession and, you know, 07, 06, 08, you kind of see, you know, you remember when times were oh, yeah. not great. Yep. You really had to get down, but it, it keeps on shocking me. I mean, it's, it, the private stuff is still staying steady. People are still spending money. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know when it's going to be, when it's going to slow down, to be honest with you. I wish I had that magic ball. and Or if it will. Yeah. Right, if it will. I mean, it. it's weird. You know, I, I you know, the you guys. say we're already in it, you know, it's like. It's, yeah, and it's, uh, it's not, it could be a lot worse. Yeah. It could be definitely, maybe just because I was in really bad times, mm -hmm. you know, it, you kind of see what it is and, and you're like, oh, this isn't, this isn't bad at all. Mm -hmm. But. It, it, I mean, like, it's definitely. Like we've we've seen it where you know people have like paused or just had to cancel you know jobs just because interest rates and it's like I can't make this make sense anymore. Yeah, like I gotta I gotta pause or just go. I gotta wait till this comes down. But there's always people doing something like it's right. I mean, you you drive around it, the big gauge for me is always like private stuff. Mm -hmm. If you drive around and see that people are putting up townhomes or mm -hmm. building new houses or doing a new commercial property and you you still drive around and there's still quite a bit of that going everywhere on. yeah yeah so i mean that that's a good sign um yeah in public infrastructure there's you know the the feds uh, they've allocated a lot of money towards that um mm -hmm. i i mean i don't think we've even really seen a lot of it it's, it's mm -hmm. still trickling in which is which is good yeah you know that's um it that's better for the future in case we do have a little bit of a slowdown um you know people are gonna m maybe migrate more to public work and and you know stay in that how, mu how much of that do you do versus private i would say public is probably 85 to 90 percent we, we do a lot of public bid build i mean um it varies on year it'll fluctuate a little bit but yeah. we're primarily the public infrastructure just because the type of work we do with uh tunneling and you know um you don't get a big diameter tunnel in a housing development. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen mm -hmm. that often. So that's kind of what we, you know, gravitate towards. And um, it, it seems to be pretty stable. You know, the unfortunate part about that is you got to be low bid. You know, there's yep. not, not a whole lot of relationship mm -hmm. building there. It's like if you're not low, you're not getting the work. So there's, How much do you think relationship or, like, skill, though, like, plays into it, though? I think it it definitely helps. I mean – you're gonna know, um, I shouldn't say not what you can get away with, but you're, you're gonna understand how the, what the owner's expectations are. Yep. Um, and you can plan for that, and that might give you a little more competitive edge, especially if you've worked with that client before. Um, you're gonna know their expectations. Um, mm -hmm. you, you're gonna understand what they're looking for. So that, that's gonna, that, that's where that kind of plays in. Um, as far as the public bid market, it, you know, you don't get to turn your bid in and then sit down and have a meeting and, you know, well, can you get a little bit tougher? Mm -hmm. or, you know, it, or if they had a poor experience with another contractor, they, they, by law, they really just can't throw them out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they, they got to take that a little bit. So that kind of, it makes it tougher, especially yeah. if, you know, you do see a little bit of a slowdown, you know, you start getting uh, contractors that aren't your typical competitors and you know so you're gonna have a little more competitive instead of five bids you might have 10 bids mm -hmm. you know so and there you just got to kind of start thinking out of the box and trying to you know it keeps you in check you know you got to make sure you got to go that extra mile to figure out that, that bid out and you know that how to be efficient and yeah with what you're doing exactly you know sure, dig, yeah. dig deep and try to find those little extra you know tricks that you might get you the job and instead of just you know, when times are good, sometimes you can just throw numbers at that, you know, it, you know, you're covered and you're going to get the job. Well, yep. when it gets nitty gritty, you got to, you got to. I mean, you don't want to go upside down on a, on a project it, either, you know. Exactly. It goes back to, like I said, anybody can write a number down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you still got to build it and still got to make money. Yep. So you got you to you put some thought into it for sure. What do you think, um, you know, what do you think makes Minger stand out from competitors? just the industry um kind of going back to that 
um, challenging projects. I, we like to work with owners too. Um, if we see something that may not work or there's a better way to skin the cat, you know, we'll bring that idea to the table. And, and a lot of times we got good relationships with owners and clients and they'll they'll sit down and listen to us and be like, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. And sometimes they're like, no, this is the way we got to do it. Cause there's more to the story. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just, that's the way we got to build it. But, um, usually they're really open to, we can bring those ideas to the table. Right. And, you know, that kind of goes back to that thinking out of the box and trying to, you know, you know, shave time on schedule. Um, it, you know, build. well, they gotta, they gotta be able to like take you guys as like reputation and experience and go like, Okay, I gotta, I gotta yeah. consider this now. And, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of jobs that we get involved with that, you know, some engineers or owners that they don't even, they've never even seen it before. But, you know, we've done some weird stuff over, say, in Milwaukee or down in Iowa, and it might be some suburb of the Twin Cities, and they're like, they've never even heard of that mm -hmm. process. And, but it's a great way to, you know, do a different layout on a utility design or, mm -hmm. or, instead of open cut and, and, you know, basically burden all these people in this, um, you know, neighborhood that everybody's living in and needs to go to work and school every day, we could do a trenchless. Right. And we can do it for the same price of the open cut because we can say, you know, we don't have to do all the restoration and people, we don't have as big of an impact. So having that option, I think makes us, you know, it, mm -hmm. we got different ways that we can provide, you know, ways to install utilities and stuff like that. I, I think that that's huge. You know, we, we give you a couple, or if we get caught in, like we were talking about utility hits or, or not <coughs> hits, but, um, a conflict, mm -hmm. you know, there's ways that we can look at it and be like, Hey, you know, if we redesign this alignment, go over here and we might have to use a different method of installation, but we can do that in house and not bring a subcontractor in. You know right. that that helps us. That helps us keep the project moving, and you know we don't have to hit the brakes and you know basically throw up our arms and say, "Your problem, not ours." <laughs> right. You know, and that's that's what the attitude is that we always try to push is like, "No, it, it it's all of our problem." When you guys have had projects that you know. Other people just didn't want to try to even take on, you know, and just like, hey, this this is <laughs> hard or difficult or interesting or uh, more than what we want to try to, you know, do. And, you know, I think you've mentioned that, too, just that we're not afraid to, to you know, get dirty, but also figure it out. Right. You know? And that and that's, you know, we've got a lot of great minds that we all work together that work at Manger Construction that, you know, it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll sit down in a conference room and be like, all right, this is what we got. You know, yeah. let's throw some ideas together. And all of a sudden you're sitting there talking like somebody will bring something up and like, that's a great idea. Why didn't yeah. I think of that? But yeah, let's present that to them, you know, and we can sit and brainstorm and, and you know, we meet every week um, on Mondays and we bring all the superintendents and project managers together. And it's basically just a collaborative on going over the company schedule, what everybody's doing. Mm -hmm trying to be transparent and but you, you lead those yeah nice. yeah yep. you know basically we go review a schedule agenda and it's a way to if if somebody's struggling on another project and it, you could have a superintendent in iowa and you got a superintendent in northern minnesota and they're like mm -hmm. all of a sudden we're talking about our conflict and they'll be like have you tried this? Or yeah. Talk to this person. They're like, oh, yeah, that's, yep. that's brilliant. Absolutely. You know, and because you get into struggles or a, a challenge, and you start getting kind of that tunnel vision. And if and that's why these meetings are really important to us, as we get everybody collaborating, mm -hmm. and you know, try, when you're try to help leveraging each other. years and years of experience and different, you know, exactly avenues that all you know, everyone coming together is it's way more powerful. Yeah, and you can. Yeah, leverage that. And yeah, and and nothing's a secret. You know, everybody yep. knows what everybody's doing. It's not like, oh, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. You know, they're, yep. you know, it's it's not a big secret. You know, it's I try to be transparent because if anything, somebody can help out with a idea mm -hmm. that you know they might not have thought of, and you know, and that's a big thing. You know, sometimes people like, well, they don't want to hurt their pride. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, and I don't want to ask for help. Right, yeah. and in these meetings, we're like, we got to put pride aside. Yep. You know, we got to come up with solutions, and you know, try to 
keep moving forward and mm -hmm. you know in a positive direction not a negative direction yeah yeah and we're all on the same team doing it. it exactly you know we have different divisions within minger construction but you know I, I could tell people it's the same name on the side <laughs> of the excavator you know yeah. it's like it doesn't <laughs> we all got to work together right yeah because that, that's one of the big things why we started getting into different avenues as we grew is because that was my biggest pet peeve is you'd be working for a contractor or whatever and there'd be like this rivalry you know those dang pipe guys those dang dirt mm -hmm. guys you know mm -hmm. and they don't you know it's like they're almost trying to sabotage each other and i hated that yeah you know and it's like that's why we kind of started doing some things in house and you know it's it, working together you yeah. know and and sometimes we even get that within but you got to squash it fast mm -hmm. like all right time out you know, we're all on the same team here. We've got to work together because if we start going against each other, we're just going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What What has been uh, a project that stood out to you that's been more difficult? One of the harder ones. More difficult, I would say. One thing that really sticks out that kind of got us into the really into the trenchless world is we went out to Utah in 2010, and. Um, we did 78 jackings or tunnels. Okay. And we hadn't even done 78 tunnels in our existence until then, before that. And we kind of went out there. Um, and these are all different tunnels? All different tunnels. Okay. It was uh, in Provo, Utah. Um, we worked for Ames Construction. Mm -hmm. And there was 78 different crossings. We had to go underneath I-15, all different sizes and ranges. And we threw a number, put together a number. You know, and it was a how do you do that? It was a giant risk. I mean, we <laughs> I look back at it now and I'm like, Oh my gosh, we were crazy. <clears throat> yeah. You know, <laughs> and I think a lot of people in the industry thought we were crazy. And I if somebody did it now, I'd probably think they were crazy too. You know, mm -hmm. it's but looking back, I mean that really got our foot in the door in the trenchless industry. And was it a challenging job? Yes, because we you know, we were learning a lot on the way. And, you know, we weren't trenchless experts by any means. I mean we we knew enough to be dangerous, but we grew so much from that and just knowledge. Mm. And a majority of those people still work work for us. But I mean, it. Um, my brother went out there and ran the project, and um, my dad would go out there, you know, every couple of weeks and help, you know, put it together. I he was really focusing on that out there, and that's where it kind of helped me grow too, helping. Mm -hmm. with the uh, you know work that we had in the midwest yep and keep that going but it uh his job was a huge success but it was just you know the challenges and just learning things i think that you know that really put us on the map and and, and really grew from that i was gonna say because like the i don't know, it doesn't seem like the like i mean obviously there's the u.s as a whole is you know, well there's a lot of companies but still, like in your world, I mean, a lot of people know what's going on, who's who, yep. what people do. So, I mean, you complete a job like that. I'm sure that that people knew about it. Yeah, you know? I mean, who are these crazy guys from Minnesota that yeah, you know, were an open cut contractor <laughs> five years ago, and now they're and now they're going out doing a monster yep. trenchless project. You know, uh, yeah. There. Uh, so to have that on your resume and for people to know that you can take on that, I mean that. Yeah, that that sure kind of that put us to the next level. I mean, yeah. that kind of that let people know that we, you know, we were the real deal. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't some fly by night outfit, and you know <laughs> it, that, that that really yeah took us to the next level in my opinion. I mean, what what do you think? Uh, what do you think will take Mayor to the next level? I think. And do you want that? I always tell people, you know, we've grown over the years, you know, slowly. I, I, I really don't see us with a vision, this huge, great, big, you know, hundreds and hundreds of employees. I don't really, that doesn't sound interesting to mm -hmm. me. I just want to grow to be better, developing people, um, developing good leadership, um, keeping up on technology, mm -hmm. having, you know, the right tools in your toolbox. To me, that's growing. Yep. in a way it yep. necessarily isn't always volume or, or people but if you can grow yeah, people find that out quick that it's yeah and and, and, yeah. and some people like chasing that um but you know it, we're doing just fine right now and, I, and, and we still we're still growing yeah a little bit and 
Right. Well, I mean, if you focus on that, you're going to grow inherently. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and, you know, you get people that want to come work for you. And, and when you have people knocking on your door that say they want to come work for Minger Construction and you look at their resume and it's out of this world mm -hmm. and they have a whole crew with them, it's really hard to say no. Yep. You know, as long yep. as the work is there and, you know, and they have the same mindset as as you do, you know, it, it's easy. You know, it's it. You can be successful. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's where we have grown in the last, you know, ten years. Is you know, we've had some really good opportunities, and that's hard to say no to. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're at a really good spot right now. You know, it's it's manageable, and you know, we're we're in a good. We got good people, and it, it yeah, it, it, it that big dream of being a big monster construction company just isn't that appealing to me. Did you ever have that or not really? Yeah. No. I mean, that's, it's just always that kind of that smaller, I guess it kind of goes back to family. You know, mm. I, I don't want people to feel like a number. Oh yeah. You know, yep. I, I'd rather people feel like they're, you know, they know who everybody is, you know, and you know, they can recognize people. They know people's first name, but, people can still come to me with a problem. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be some mythical creature <laughs> in an office that, you know, no one wants to yeah. come and talk to. That, that drives me nuts. You know, it's like, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't mind when people come and talk to me about problems. You know, that's it, to me, that kind of goes back to that fan. We're in this together. So absolutely. Yeah. So what, what does motivate you? Um, to do good work, to be, you know, be a leader in the industry you know that that you know want to be the best you mm -hmm. know that's 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 what motivates make sure we are making clients happy it really bums me out if i hear somebody isn't happy with something we did or something like that you know i i we try to fix that mm -hmm. you know if, if that you know it doesn't happen very often but when it does you know it you know, we want to nip that in the butt right away because that's that's not what we're about. Right. You know, so that that motivates me is just to keep keep being an industry leader. You know, just you know, make sure people want to work with Minger Construction. That that's my big thing is and and to keep work with and for yeah, yeah. exactly and and you know to uh, keep providing for people. You know, I, that's that's a big thing for me is you know. I, feeding people's families, you know, that, I, mm -hmm. I, that, that motivates me to, you know, make sure that they have a place to come, come work to and enjoy to work at, you know, that's, that's, that, that really, that drives me in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. How do you think, um, you know, just technology and like, uh, you know, media and stuff like that has been changing elevating you know the construction industry i know i mean we've done we've done video projects together you know how do you think that technology and like media is is adding to or taking away from from what you guys are doing it, that's a great point <clears throat> adding and taking away because i think there's mm -hmm. both um adding you know you can use it to your resource i think you you really got to keep up with the times um you know it, don't be that person or that company that doesn't want to try new things, you know, or have that mentality. If it, if it's not broken, don't fix it, you know, cause eventually it will be broken. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to jump head first into it, but as long as you kind of keep developing and, you know, progressing towards technology that, that to me, that's in our, my opinion, that's a good, good way to go. Yep. Um, but sometimes the technology can be super overwhelming. Mm. There's so much out there that you can do and it's it's almost to the point where it's like there's so much information there that what do i even do with all this information um like tracking and um you know real time how much dirt you're moving at the same time how much compaction you know it's like all this information is getting thrown at you and it's like what do you even do with all that information right so there you almost need another person to organize that information and then what do you do with all that information once it's organized? Are you even really going to use it mm -hmm. type of a deal? So that's where sometimes it gets overwhelming and it's like, all right, hold on. You know? Well, yeah. And you like, what's, what's our focus, you know, like, like we're getting all these you know things, but are we, is it distracting us from like, correct. What makes us us kind of thing. And sometimes I feel like some, it, you got to watch with technology or information that 
it takes the personal aspect out of it. Mm -hmm. You rely so much on a computer or everything providing you all this information where sometimes you got to sit back and look at the information and be like, the computer may not throw a red flag at you or, you know, the information, the real, you know, you look at him like, oh my gosh, you know, this, why are we only moving this X amount of dirt? Mm -hmm. You know, just sometimes it just becomes too fluid and it kind of takes that human touch out of it. And it almost makes us dumber. Mm. You know, it just makes us, it makes it too. You don't you, think you, anymore. Either. Right. You rely on a computer and all that. And, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't make you think outside the box or it just becomes, you almost become complacent with that computer. And, and it's a little scary because that's the way you, know, you got AI and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's coming on hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. And you just still try to. I, in my opinion, just try to keep that, try to keep that personal touch and make sure people are still learning, yeah. you know, and not relying completely solely on computers. But at the same time, it's really hard not to, because it, it does make your life a lot easier. Right. So you got to find that balance. But yeah, when you said it could go backwards, that's, that's kind of my thought on mm -hmm. going backwards. But, mm -hmm. you know, like the videos and stuff, I think that's a great avenue of like a, you and I were talking beforehand is, you know, we do a lot of public bids, so marketing's not, mm -hmm. it's not really necessary. Yep. Yep. Um, we got to put a, you know, turn a hard bid in and, you know, if we get the work rate, if not, we go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. But just to let people know what you're doing and get people interested in what you're doing, I think is huge. And it helps if you go into a different marketplace and nobody, you yeah, know, nobody no knew, knows, knows who, who Minger Construction is. Well, go to our website, watch this video and, oh, that's, looks like these guys know what they're doing. So I mean that 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 aspect helps of it, but just just what about the internal morale side, like the employee side? It, it helps. Like yeah. when you guys did our first video, people were super excited. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, there's like that is awesome. We hear that a lot. Just like I mean, people put a ton of blood, sweat, and tears into their job, and they're like they they have pride in their work. Yeah, you know, and they're they're proud that they're a part of this thing. So to be able to like have these videos that they're that they're in or that the company, you know, that they work for has, I mean, to be able to share with friends and family and, you know, stuff like that. Like people get excited. Boy, exactly. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they could share it and be like, Hey, you know, with your neighbor and yeah. like, what do you do? And it's like, yeah. Oh, you're watching this YouTube video. Check this one. Yeah. yeah this this yeah. is what, Oh, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, so I, it, that, yeah, it definitely, it boosts morale and mm -hmm. it, it lets you show off a little bit too, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I think that, in the construction industry, we don't get to do that very often, and it's pretty cool with these videos that are out there now on social media and whatnot. It it, it lets you show off a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. we, we do some pretty cool stuff, you know? especially on the civil side. Like most of your stuff at the end is covered up, and it's like yeah, nobody yeah. nobody knows, or you, you drive by at fifty miles an yeah. hour, and it's like oh, there's an excavator swinging, yeah. but <laughs> nobody knows what they're doing. Yeah, or, and, and here they they could be putting in, you know, a large sewer that, you know drains the, your whole city mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. people have no idea what that's what that's all about and so that, that's what's kind of neat you know and, and like i said as an industry as a whole we do a lot of cool stuff and uh. to get people interested in it and that gets that younger generation to oh yeah you know want to get into our industry that's coming back like they're getting really excited about just yeah more and more young people are like one they they see it as a, a, a viable option now but two it's just like you know, we're making the industry like cool. Like this is like, oh, dude, this stuff is sick. Yeah. Oh, ex exactly. Gotta, you know, I get to do this and go here and work on this and operate this equipment and you know. Yep. That's cool for people. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure, without a doubt. You know. And your project in Iowa, that was sick. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. That was awesome. That was yeah. uh, when we went to the pre bit. I was looking at him like, this is something. I th we got to get this one. We got to mm -hmm. put our heads together and yeah, put a good number make, at this yeah, one. Make and, this happen. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, yeah, it was definitely not a lot of people say you can tunnel into Carver Hawkeye Arena yep. and break out and everything it was a huge success and it was a fun one. And you guys made it look really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm excited to see too, like how you know how that turns out. Yeah. And like what does it turn into after there's a massive pit and hole, you know, and yeah. through and it's like I think next year is when uh final complete, yeah, the wrestlers will be able to train and then go in the elevator and mm -hmm. go down five stories and walk in uh, to the arena nope. and, and not get cold that's right yeah that's important yeah exactly, <clears throat> exactly. that's awesome 
Um, for you yourself personally, how do you uh, how do you continue to to learn and develop yourself? Um, you, you know, I going to conferences. That's probably my biggest thing. Um, we like uh, on the trenchless side. They have no dig conference. Going to different conferences like that and and just learning about what's going on in the industry. Um, reading mm-hmm. books. You know, trying to keep up with leadership type stuff. Um, do you enjoy that side of kind of what you do? Yeah, yeah. Yep. I I like to because it's it's a way to improve. You know, try to you know always learn and try to you know if. If you're not learning you're dying you know uh, it's yep. it, and just try to kind of perfect your craft in a way you know and just it helps you keep excited about the industry too mm-hmm. um if you kind of get into that complacency of just like oh, doing the same thing over and over again and not interested in what other people do it it, you know, it becomes boring in a, mm-hmm. in a sense but yeah i i really enjoy it you know and and doing an industry inv- events you know um yep socializing with you know competitors and stuff like that you know that it, it's a cool industry that we're in you know it's 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 a tight-knit industry you know but at the end of the day we're we're all pretty pretty friendly with each other and it, mm-hmm. it's a good time you know it's it's pretty cool and you can pick up the phone with your direct competitor yeah and have a yeah. conversation with them and you know and you know just bounce ideas or you know what what are you going through and this type of stuff mm-hmm. and that that makes you can't always do that in a lot of industries. Well, there's not a lot of people you can talk to about that. Right, yeah. it, exactly. And that's what makes it – that's why I love our industry is just you, you have mm-hmm. that aspect. And, you know, I've been in construction my whole life, so I don't quite know if it's like that across the board. I'm sure it is to some extent, mm-hmm. but it, it makes it definitely – it makes it appealing. So in a, in a – I mean, I know running a company is – can be a high stress environment obviously at times you know and you got a, a lot of pressure what is uh what does luke do to fill his tank and and kind of have that retreat yeah well right now it's chasing my boys i got a five-year-old and a three-year-old and you know hanging out with my wife and family you know that, yeah. that definitely is that's kind of my go-to now but um skiing or skiing. snowboarding. Yep. I just got back yep. from a trip from Utah. That's kind of my. I saw some photos. Yeah, that's that's my big release. It's, that looks sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It uh, mountain biking, dirt biking, that type of stuff. You know, mm-hmm. trying to get out, and uh, I don't do a whole lot of hunting and fishing, but you know, motorsports and oh, yeah. that type of stuff. I I really gravitate towards, and yeah, that's kind of my my big release. Yeah. yeah. It looks sick. I mean, the uh, the snowmobiles, especially, just lo- it looks so much fun. Yeah, getting getting back in the back country in the mountains and it, it's awesome, especially when you can do it with a group of buddies. And you know, we've kind of got an annual trip that we do, and it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. We have we have a great time, and yep. um, it yeah, it's just a way to unwind and really. I think you need it too. Yeah, you, know, you, you need some kind of. I've been learning more about, you know, like the retreat aspect of, because like, what is, you know, what is a retreat? You know, like what, who takes time? Like I gotta, I gotta go, go, go. I got stuff to do. But that element of like retreat and just like the day to day can give you that, that refresh. Yes. You know, to, to get back on track, to, to be reignited, to, you know, have clarity in what you're trying to do and, you know, what's next. Uh, for the company, especially for, you know, you too, like ramping up into, you know, we do this now and we ramp back up into a really busy season. And yeah. Like I got to get dialed in for that. You know? Yep, it, exactly. And it kind of helps you just relax. Like I, you know, this is our slow time right now. Mm. And it's it's a little bit refreshing. It, it lets you reset, kind of go over your, your goals, what you want to do, and goes through your list and, you know, tighten up some loose ends mm-hmm. that you got out there and you know how you can improve and stuff like that but you know going on a trip or something like that it it definitely helps and yeah. you know and trying to i struggle with disconnecting even when you're on that trip oh it's hard yeah really hard. I, I i do struggle with it i'm trying to get better at it just like you know you, you don't need to call and check in all the time no. and stuff like that. I'm trying to get better at it, but <laughs> it's it, no, it's I get it. I mean, we we took a cruise this year, and it was like every morning, like the first couple hours was just 
phone, computer. Like yeah. Written. But at the same time, though, it, it doesn't make – I always kind of devote a little bit. Go through emails and stuff like that. I feel mm -hmm. like as if, if you could – in my opinion, if you completely check that out and then you go back, mm -hmm. like it's almost more stressful to get back to work. Yeah. And when like, you know that it's at least taken care of. Right, right. At least kinda, you kind of forget about it. Right. Or at least bit. you can make a list and kind of yeah. – at least you kind of know what you're into instead of like you've got – five days of emails that yeah. it, you're like, oh my gosh. But yeah, it's, it's, it, you gotta learn to disconnect a little bit, but mm -hmm. it, uh, it, yeah, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it fully, but yep. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It is. It is. Um, yeah, as we, as we kind of wrap, uh, wrap things up, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of listeners that own companies at, at different levels and aspiring entrepreneurs and, leaders and companies, you know, stuff like that. I mean, what, what advice would you, would you give, you know, that, that, uh, that entrepreneur, that business owner, that, you know, person that is just trying to, trying to be better, do better. And, you know, uh, be humble. Yeah. That's my biggest thing is it, we're all, we're all equal. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it, you can get replaced really fast. It, it, you know, if, if you think you're the best and you're going to steamroll over everybody someday, somebody's going to steamroll right over you, mm -hmm. you know, it, uh, it, it treat people the way you want to be treated. And just, you know, it, that's, yeah, my big thing is just be humble. Don't get, mm -hmm. don't get too big of a head. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's to me, that's huge. Cause then people are going to want to work with you. Yeah. They're going to want to be on your team. Um, it, yeah, I mean, there's confidence and all that yep. stuff like that, but you know, uh, just treat people right. Yep. You know, I think that's 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 huge to me. You know, it's uh, and I feel like it's it's working pretty well. You know, it, we don't have a lot of turnover in Minger Construction because you know, we, like going back, you know, would I do that job? Because mm. if if I wouldn't, I have a tough time telling my crew to do that job. So it's it's, yeah, like I said, just humble's huge. We see that. I mean, you see, I'd say the, I mean, successful people and they kind of figure it out. They have like that humble confidence. Like they're they're not trying to necessarily prove something. That's like they know what they know and they're comfortable in that. And they've, you know, they've they've figured it out to an extent. And you know, yeah. So yeah, and, and it'll help you build a big te a good team around you. Yep. You know. Um, it's I don't know a lot of people that like to be around yeah. big mouth arrogant people you know some I don't know, some people gravitate towards that I, yeah. not me yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know it's it's one of those things where you know it, you you typically gonna want to work, work around people that <clears throat> you know you like to be around 100 percent you know and not saying that everybody wants to be around me all the time, but, <laughs> but you know, just uh, don't be a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it, life's life short. So yeah, yeah that, that that's my biggest thing. It's, oh, I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, sweet uh, Luke. Yeah, I want to thank you again. This has been a oh, thank great you. opportunity. I've definitely learned a lot. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I really appreciate you coming on. No, I appreciate you bringing me down here and getting a tour of the place and all the stuff that you guys done for us over the last couple of years. It's been, it's been awesome. Looking forward to more. Yeah. Looking forward to the future. Yeah. Awesome. And as always guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate, uh, you guys listening and tuning in today. I hope that you, you learned something, uh, you grabbed a, a nugget that you can apply, uh, in your business and your journey, uh, we're excited for the future to keep having more and more guests on, uh, talking about all kinds of different topics related to, to business, entrepreneurship, leadership, um, sales, marketing, anything like that. So, yeah, if uh, if you if you like this, please continue to share it out uh, with friends. And uh, yeah, we're just excited to keep rolling. We'll see you guys on the next one.